Hello everyone and welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. As spring approaches and our Venus flytraps are sleepily awakening after a long dormancy period, I thought it was a good time to start talking about watering. I'm going to share my best practices with some great tips and tricks that will hopefully make watering your plants a little bit easier. This is my ultimate Venus flytrap watering guide that I've recently updated as I continue to learn more about these amazing plants. I'm splitting this watering guide into two different sections. Part one is going to be talking about how and when to water your Venus flytraps, and part two is going to go more into what types of water to use for Venus flytraps and best ways to obtain and measure that water. Make sure to check out part two of this video after you're finished. You'll see it pop up on the screen as soon as this one's over. Before we get into the best practices with some of my best tips and tricks, I think it's really important to understand how Venus flytraps grow in the wild in their natural habitat. One of the biggest Venus flytrap myths and misconceptions is that they grow in swampy, boggy areas. In truth, Venus flytraps grow in North Carolina in areas called pine savannas. These areas are well drained on top, but the roots to the plants there always have access to water below the surface. Knowing this helps us understand what type of watering conditions help Venus flytraps thrive. A little dry on the top, but wet down where the roots are. This could be a tricky balance sometimes to maintain, which is why this can be one of the areas of Venus flytrap care that is tricky for their owners to master. All right, let's get into some best practices and some tips and tricks for watering Venus flytraps. My very first and possibly most important tip for watering is understanding the weight of your planter or pot. Knowing the feel of your planter when it needs water versus when it's full will make your Venus flytrap watering life so much easier. Knowing the weight will be easier than constantly sticking your finger in the soil or trying to keep a watering calendar. Watering patterns can really change a lot as the weather and temperatures change. Knowing the weight will keep you an expert when weather is cold or when weather is warm. It can take, it can take a lot of the guesswork out of watering, which is really important. When your Venus flytrap needs water, allow yourself to get really familiar with its weight at that time. After watering, allow the plant to absorb water for 24 hours, come back, and get familiar with the weight of the planter now that it's full of water. Knowing the weight of your planter can take a lot of the guesswork out of knowing when to water. I can't stress how important this tip is to becoming experienced at watering Venus flytraps. While you're getting familiar with the weight of your planter or pot, it's really important to go over some tips that'll help you know when it's time to water your Venus flytrap. But real quick before we do that, let me show you how you can get your hands on your very first or next Venus flytrap. I'm super pumped about teaming up with California carnivores. They're one of the most experienced and knowledgeable carnivorous plant nurseries in the entire world. They have a massive selection year round of all types of carnivorous plants. There will definitely be something in their nursery you fall in love with. On top of that, they've also been generous enough to offer my viewers an exclusive 10% discount on their order when they enter CP Hub at checkout. That's CP Hub. Head on over and pick out yourself a new carnivorous plant to add to your collection. You know you deserve it. Let's go ahead and get back to the video. All right, thank you so much for listening to that. I really appreciate it. If you're still learning the weight of your planters but need to know when your plant needs water, one of the easiest ways to do this is to put your finger in the substrate. Go down about an inch or two. If the substrate is still dry down that far, your plant probably needs water. You never want your Venus flytrap to go completely dry. It's important that the roots always have access to water. A Venus flytrap can dry out and die if the planter is allowed to go completely dry. Another great tip is to use a plant tracker to keep a watering journal. This can be really helpful when the weather conditions are consistent, but can be hard to rely on when the weather is not the same day in and day out. If you're interested in a free plant tracker, I actually have one you can download to help you keep track of all your watering patterns. The link is up above on the left hand side. Just go to carnivorousplantshub.com slash plant dash tracker. Just put in your email and I'll send you a free tracker along with the Venus flytrap care sheet directly to your email. All right, let's go ahead and talk about top watering versus tray watering. I almost always tray water my Venus flytraps, knowing that the roots like having access to the water all the time, while the top prefers it to be a little more dry, seems to kind of point out the obvious choice for tray or bottom watering over top watering. Keeping water in the tray allows the lower part of the plant to have access to water more consistently. A common watering error that I see often is people leaving the tray full of water all the time. You do not want your Venus flytrap sitting in water all the time. This can lead to mold, mildew, and even rot which usually results in the death of your plant. Crown rot is one of the more common killers of Venus flytraps and it happens mostly because of the common belief that they should always be in wet and swampy conditions. Now there are always exceptions to this rule so let's talk about that real quick. If you're in the middle of peak growing season and the weather is consistently above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 
your plant is probably going through a lot of water. You can probably put water in your tray and it's gone after two or three days, if not even less time. In these growing conditions, it's absolutely fine and even probably recommended to keep that tray full of water. When the temperatures drop and you notice that the tray of water is sticking around for more than three days or so, I strongly recommend pulling the fly trap out of the water and emptying the tray. Water is going to stick around a lot longer as temps begin to drop. It's vital that your watering habits adapt to the weather conditions. This is why understanding the weight of your planter is so important. Venus fly traps shouldn't be sitting in stagnant water for more than a few days. I have a few more really important tips to get to, but before I do that, I did want to mention that the watering guide is just one small part of a long series all about caring for Venus fly traps that I'm putting together. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you want to learn more about Venus fly trap care. I'm really striving hard to one day open my own carnivorous plant nursery and your support really means the world to me. Be sure to check out the description of this video to see all my other Venus flytrap care videos so that you can become a master Venus flytrap grower. If you keep your Venus flytraps indoors, it becomes even more important for you to keep an eye on the water levels. Water does not dissipate as quick indoors as it will outside in the sun. It's important that you do not allow your Venus flytraps to sit in water all the time indoors. I know I keep coming back to this, but it's another good reason for you to have a very good familiarity with the weight of your planter. I give my Venus fly traps considerably less water during peak growing season when they're inside versus peak growing season when I keep them outside. Let's go ahead and take a moment here and talk about top watering really quick. Top watering is something that I do about once a month or so, but it's not really for the watering's sake, but to help flush the plant. Sometimes, especially if left outside, they can collect stuff on the top. Sometimes you see pollen, fallen leaves, and other debris land in the planter. Sometimes this stuff can seep into the top of the soil and not be great for the Venus flytrap. I like to top water until I see the tray starting to fill. I then go ahead and dump out that water so that the plant doesn't absorb it back up. This helps flush some of the dissolved solids that may have built up in the soil. You can do this a few times to help give your plant a really good flush. This can really help the long-term health of your substrate and the plant. A really common question that I see a lot is, I keep my Venus flytraps outdoors. What do I do if it starts raining? Venus flytraps will actually do really great in the rain, especially if it's just a rainy day in the middle of summer. Definitely don't worry about it. Let them be. They'll dry out the next day and they'll be fine. If the rain lasts for more than a couple of days, then I recommend maybe just pulling them out of the tray that they're in so that the water can flow out the bottom of the pot. If the rain lasts for more than a week, I recommend covering them and maybe getting them out of the rain for a little bit. They really shouldn't be exposed to that much water for really long periods of time. I might hold them out for a couple days. If it's still raining, go ahead and put them back out in the rain. But anything over a week and a half, I really like to try to keep them, uh, let them dry out a little bit before I let them absorb more of the rain. Another question that I get a lot is, how should my watering habits change while my plant's going through dormancy? If you're doing dormancy correct, it's probably somewhere between 30 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's little to no light for your plants. In these conditions, water's going to stick around for a really long time. I strongly recommend that you fill the tray, allow the plant to absorb the water for a full day or two, then dump the tray out if there's any water left over. The plant may maintain the water for weeks at a time. I watered my fly traps this winter in dormancy maybe once every three to four weeks. Overwatering and rotting Venus fly traps during dormancy is extremely common. The, again, I know I keep going back to this, but know the weight of your pot so that you don't overwater during dormancy. It is a really easy way to kill your Venus fly trap continue to become an expert about watering Venus flytraps and to learn what kind of water that they actually need, please watch part two of my watering series. You can click on it right here. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!